Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for our closing um, session. My name is Jackie King. I'm the Vice Chair of the Australia New Zealand PRME Chapter, and I am the Director of Accreditation and Joint Strategic Projects, which, which includes um, PRME at the University of Melbourne at the Business at the Faculty of Business and Economics in the Melbourne Business School. So thank you for joining us for summer's getting quite late on Friday evening. Hope you've enjoyed your day. Um, it's, I would like to introduce my co-panelist, if she can come up on screen, Chandrika Palmer, is the chair of PRME India. Welcome Chandrika, we will take Good it in time. turns to, thank you for joining me today up here. Um, we will take a few minutes each to just give some reflections on the day and then we'll have a bit of a conversation to close up. So we'll look forward to hearing from you very, very shortly. So um, 15 years, the PRME, it's been such a wonderful series of sessions today that acknowledge how far the global movement has come, but yet how far we have to go, uh, particularly in these challenging times. Thank you so much to all who have made it happen. It took a literal global village, including the participants who have been here this evening and during the day, the speakers, the moderators, the steering committee, um, who I know have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to get all of our speakers in place, the chapter chairs and vice chairs, and of course, all the producers and the people behind the scenes, particularly Sophie from the New York office, and of course, Mete. So um, thank you, Mete, for your leadership in these uncertain times and um, leading this global movement to, thr to thrive through a really challenging few years. In, your, in her introduction, Mete referred to, um, you know, things she was really excited about and wanted to look forward to um, through her leadership of PRME, including knowledge and changes in the curriculum, the way we engage with students, pedagogy and practice of teaching in the classroom, relating that to the practical realities of business today and partnerships beyond the classrooms, through the collective impact that we can generate through it as, as education providers um, and telling the collective uh, narrative. And of course, the launch of the knowledge sharing tech platform, which we are very excited to see come to fruition. Throughout the afternoon, we shared different examples of leadership across the regions, including climate change, a wonderful keynote from Debbie around purpose-driven university and the importance of the student voice in determining what that looks like. Um, and then we've broken out into a number of panels. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't attend all of them and I was involved in one, so I can't feed back on all of them. But I know that the two I attended on First Nations and Indigenous um, um, challenges, as well as measuring impact, there was a real sense of camaraderie, of collective action and a desire to move forward together amongst the panelists. Um, some of the other sessions um, were around planetary boundaries, conflict and peace, student voice, um, inclusion, diversity and inclusion and participation, social enterprise and um, social impact. And I can only assume that the call from having good intentions to moving forward with actions was resonated in all of those. So I would now like to um, call on Chandrika to give her reflections of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you so much. Um, and I'll just add my thank yous. Uh, but yes, what a fantastic few, year, a few hours it's been uh, connecting with a community that's speaking the same language and thinking of future which would be more equitable and sustainable. You know, I would you know, add to Jackie's uh, salutes to the participants today uh, as they're, you know, the conversations today represent some of the best experiments and the commitment of trying to work towards a sustainable future. You know, it has, it embodied you know, some of the sessions in the morning, embodied the best of values, the experimentations that groups like us can offer the future. Uh, Mete had, of course, set the tune at the very onset by asking us all to think not about just the words and the research in the domain of mm -hmm. RME, but also to think of the everyday practices that each one of us engages in and to see how it translates in making for a sustainable future. And the various sessions in the morning have also brought focus that there are many divides inside, not the global south and the uh, global north uh, uh, divide, but also the inequities in each society, country, locality within. 
there's also a feeling uh, when I listen to all of us speaking that we're talking to the converted, a community that already believes and is trying to walk that the talk of building those futures. But what we are doing is also sharing those best practices. Uh, one of the things that came to my mind as I listened to the sessions in the morning was that as an enterprise, uh, responsible management education will have to deal with a range of issues which have been spoken about today, from social entrepreneurship, inclusion, carbon footprint, indigenous knowledge, and all, and all of it demands a certain seriousness. For example, even as we were speaking of climate change, uh, um, you know, we in South Asia know that we've been faced with one of the extreme heat waves. In India, we were told um, that an average maximum temperature in March, April this year uh, in Northern and Central India were the highest since the country's weather office started keeping records almost 122 years ago. But that heat wave uh, also sparked off, you know, there's a domino effect and demand for an increase in electricity, leading to outages in many states across the country, fear of cold shortages. Um, and while the experts were telling us that these things that would be managed, they were also telling us that poorer people, uh, people with underprivileged backgrounds, have fewer resources to cool down, as many of us switch on our, our ACs. And the poorer ind individuals and people within this country also had fewer options to stay inside away from the heat. Um, it only highlights the systemic inequalities that are part of an everydayness. Uh, and also brings to light that sustainability without justice and MDS. And this was a theme in, in many of the sessions this morning. I think P.T. Joe spoke about the fact that almost 2.8 billion people across the world still rely on wood for their fuel. Uh, um, and uh, I'm, all of us have gone through the pandemic though, that this was brought glaringly to the forefront during the pandemic, you know, whether it was the images of the migrants walking uh, and making their way homewards, uh, or whether it was availability, or should I say, the non-availability of devices for you know the students across the country. You know, it was clear that for many of us that even um, the online world is actually available only to the select few. So I think part of the thing of creating an awareness and solutioning for these wicked problems is our, is uh, I think what we heard was is part of our role as educators. Uh, but it also demands that each one of us walks the talk on collaboration rather than competition. In that sense, each one of us here today as a community is also is an experiment on ourselves as a prelude to the pedagogy. Because as the challenge for us as educators is of nurturing a young generation that will be sensitive to issues uh, that will build sustainable futures. And how do we do it playfully in a, some sort of a fun way um, with a certain degree of lightness uh, which uh, engages the Zeke generation, but also communicates the gravity and the wickedness of these problems. In that sense, each one of us here uh, become, um, for, for us, pedagogy and trusteeship become a critical part of this in this era of responsibility. Uh, RME is an important agenda. It demands passion and commitment from each one of us. And that is why I think each one of us are here. That alone demands and drives uh, many of the presentations that we have uh, seen and we have followed through this morning. There were, what we saw was a lot of individual and collective endeavors to be part of the change that we want. This endeavor, as I've already said, demands a collaboration. And I, I think very important, how do we go beyond talking to the converted, beyond the usual suspects of the army community? How do we make it a movement, a default setting as we go forward? How do we allow for a collaborative uh, you know, reimagining of the future, uh, so to say? Um, in India, for example, I would, I would like to see, and I, I think I speak for a large number of my colleagues in the PRME movement, to democratize the idea of PRME. Not just the institution, but the ideas that move and define crime. Uh, and to quote uh, Debbie uh, and our keynote, you know, to make a a purpose-driven community of stakeholders with the principles that define crime become the default setting of the communities that we are embedded in. So that's what I think, uh, 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 you know, Jackie. And, you know, I was just wondering that as you listen to this session in the morning, uh, what was going on in, uh, in your mind? What were you thinking? What, what were the, are the important 
issues um, that are important for your region. Jackie, would you like to join me in having this conversation? There we are. <laughs> Hi. Um, thanks, Chandrika. Um, well, in terms of region, um, uh, and this is exactly to your uh, comments, climate change is um, obviously at the forefront of everybody's mind and many of our work, many of our work as well. Um, examples of collaborations like the one shared in the session will definitely contribute to um, collectively impacting this wicked challenge, I think the phrase was used. Our regional chapter has supported the development of a climate change declaration with the Australian Business Deans Council um, to call on the deans of the Australian universities to work together and to collaborate in this space. Um, and so we're hoping that the, um, the chapter um, the regional chapter has a really instrumental role to play um, in uh, helping the region um, deal better with um, some of those climate challenges. Um, obviously, um, measurement, student engagement, graduate outcomes and the difference that we make in the world with our students from um, each of our institutions um, and capacity building with the SDGs um, is something that on a more day-to-day -day, business as usual basis is really, really um, important for um, us, our signatory members within the region. And it was really exciting to hear today some of the developments in those areas. Um, so yeah, they're probably the uh, the main, main reflections that I've had um, in terms of the um, content and its impact on our region today. I'm wondering, you know, whether our audiences were also carrying away some key words uh, and were there some key words that, you know, you carried away from uh, the morning? And I, I, I hope, you know, that some of our participants were there watching us have, you know, can put their, uh, the terms that they took away uh, into the chat so that we can see what is the chat, you know, the, the terms that they're carrying away from this morning session today. Um, I think the most inspiring session for me was the session around First Nations, um, you know, and, and the way that we can work together, um, particularly in the Australian, the current Australian political context with a recent change of government, the endorsement of the Uluru um, Statement of the Heart. It's currently National Reconciliation Week and today's Mabo Day, where it was acknowledged by the High Court 30 years ago that in fact this land was inhabited um, by its first peoples way before um, the Europeans came. So um, that gave me a lot of hope, the conversation today, in recognising the need for structural organisational change and collaboration and sharing of data, um, the need for role models, challenges um, around recruitment and representation, um, for faculty, in faculty and amongst students and incorporation of Indigenous knowledge in the curriculum. Um, I personally mentor a young Indigenous woman in the social entrepreneurship space um, and so this very much, um, this session very much resonated with me personally and is of particular relevance um, to our region. But I also acknowledge that it's a very sensitive topic. Um, people who don't have lived experience are certainly uh, far from experts in the field and that indigeneity means different things to different people in different regions. Um, so it was also really interesting to um, get an Indian perspective um, and the presentations around some of the lessons and the considerations that they have, which I believe are actually universal in terms of learning from and with communities, incorporating knowledge, representation and diversity and inclusion, how we manage stakeholders, including recruitment um, and understanding their lived experience. Important issues, um, as you said, you know, these are these are conversations will probably continue tomorrow and maybe probably for several uh, decades ahead uh, going forward. But, but hopefully, you know, the, these are beginning of conversations and collaborations as we go forward. Uh, and there'll be more robust conversations across different geographies, uh, because I think these issues resonate across geographies. It's not something issues just specific to Australia or specific to India, because I think it's just, as you said, the terminology might be different, the issues are just, um, resonate. Uh, so there's space for that discussion and the conversation to happen. 
um, I can see that you know that you have a couple of comments of what um, what uh, I think the carrying uh, the, the words being carried from one principle based uh, best for the world. Um, uh, there are other, I mean, really encourage the the participants to put those words in, um, in the chat to see what is well, it that we're carrying away from today's session. Yes, yeah. What, what was most inspiring for you today? What words will you carry away? I think the diversity of the stakeholders, uh, the fact that there were um, we were conversing about it, uh, uh, you know, across uh, different geographies. Uh, yet the issues seem to resonate. So uh, in some senses, there are individual efforts uh, across the globe. Uh, and it, it sometimes um, it's, it's, it looks like a very lonely journey when people are within different localities. And then, then you see, oh, wow, there's a huge, there's a huge community here, uh, which is discussing and issues and doing a phenomenal job, you know, phenomenal uh, and almost inspiring job. So I think that those are the kind of things that resonated. Um, uh, so you go away more rejuvenated from uh, spaces like this. <laughs> ah, regenerative agriculture, something that Ben mentioned in his panel uh, session. Um, I think I think really the point of a session like this or an an event like this is for us to start conversations on all the topics that we were in the agenda. And my wish for everybody here is that they continue those conversations. If there are people who said something that resonated with them and for them to reach out and to continue those conversations and moving forward. I think Jackie also, I think I saw the community as a trustee of, uh, uh, you know, building a certain notion of trusteeship for the future. Uh, we're thinking of responsible future. We're thinking of a, of a future where, uh, which is more inclusive, more equitable. Um, the fact those conversations are taking place. So in that sense, every participant in this conversation today became a trustee of the conversation. Absolutely. And the digital um, opportunities that are coming through a tech platform to be able to collate and aggregate our data to then be able to make decisions about curriculum, about recruitment, about all of the things that we've talked about today is also really, really exciting.